Is that a little curvy? Yes, it is. We are live <laughs> with, of course, Route 66 on the scene with Route 66. And we are with Mr. Charles Biggs himself. Now, how did, uh, we would have never thought we would actually get to meet the man himself. Well, I told you, I can't go into one family's home without having a picture that he's created in our background. And then my mom, of course, the social like that she is, she just ups and picks him up from, you know, an area. So we had to make sure that we got him here to talk about some of the artwork that he has. That's amazing. That means a lot to me because I've been exposed to him for such a long time. So thank you, Mr. Biggs, for taking the time thank you so much. to be here with us. Tell us a little bit about the African American Museum Tour and why you feel like it's a value to not only your artwork, but to the other African Americans who come to see. Okay. Well, first of all, we thank God that we had the opportunity to host the AAA, which is the Association of African American Museums. They're here uh, for seven days, and uh, they're having their conference here. So every, most of the museum executives from across the United States are here in Riverside. Riverside is a city of arts and innovation. We uh, coined that... Uh, that commitment about three years ago. So it makes sense that we would have a AAA in town because we are the city of New York. To coincide with that ideal, okay, we thought it would be appropriate if we did something historic in Riverside. Matter of fact, historic, historic in the whole Inland Empire. And that was to have a large exhibition featuring African American artists, particularly self-validating artists, along with our legends. So we were able to pull that off. It took us two years to plan it, but we planned it to coincide with the AAA visit because we wanted to show what it was like for artists in the West versus artists in the rest of the United States. So we have some great talent here, we have some great history here, we have some great artists like Samela Lewis, we got Charles White, we got uh, Artist Lane, we got Yours Truly Me, Bernard Hoyes, Kathleen Wilson, Kitty Gatewood, and the list goes on and on. And all these artists are premier, state of the arts, premier, and affluent artists who are setting the pace for the rest of the world in terms of African American art. Wow. So, how important do you think that having this type of, of structure, having this type of tour, having this type of moon exhibition, mm -hmm. how, how important do you think that it is to the culture and to the youth right now who are getting to see you live, getting to understand that there are programs like this yeah. that are available for the Partake. Yes. How important is that to the generation now? It's very important because the if you look at art, our people need to start to understand the, the value of legacy. How do we invest in our legacy? And one way of doing that is investing investing in our history in terms of its pictorial reality. So we have black artists who are painting about ourselves as a people. But it's very important. Our young people have to be, have, this is very important for them because as they grow their families, they need to have things in their house that looks like them. When somebody, when you, when somebody walks in your house, you gotta, you, it should look like a black person lives there. Okay? Now, we are the ones that, oh, there's an old saying among artists, we own the walls. Okay? and visually an African American art. So that's what we do. And it's important that you understand that people have been investing in, in art for thousands of years. Okay? A lot of times other nationalities, their kids have a head start because they 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 have the financial where to all to to finance their kids' education. We have to borrow big and steal to get our kids even into college. And when they reach when they graduate from college they're left with this enormous bill, and they don't get their careers, their their life. They're already, they're yeah, they're already in debt. 
So one of the things that we know as artists is that art has never lost its value. Okay? Real estate. Wall Street. But art has always increased in value. Okay? And what a way to start your portfolio, financial portfolio, is it investing in art. Okay? And we, and, and there's a lot of artists like me that can, can school people and show them how to do that. Okay, so that's why it's vitally important when, you know, when we can put on a show like this it's a beautiful show. In, a, in an area where the, the population of African Americans is under 10%, it's a great accomplishment. It is. Okay, Definitely. and we were able to do this. Okay, and not, not only it, it sort of kind of educated other nationalities about black culture. Okay, because one thing that will prevent racism the thing that causes racism is ignorance about the other person. Okay, so visual arts is a way people can better understand each other's culture. And see it from a different perspective. There you go. And have a different experience. Yes. That's amazing. So from an entrepreneurial perspective, would you advocate to a young artist who says, I am passionate, so passionate mm -hmm. about art that this is all I wanted to do. This is, this is, I know what I am here. This is my purpose. How hard was it getting to this place where now, you know, you're worldwide known to coming from just this man who said, I have a gift, mm -hmm. I have a talent, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it because I believe that what talent I possess is going to be beneficial for the whole and right. exposure for our culture. This is, this, is, this is the way it works. When I was young, Okay, I'm a lot older than, than you are. Are you getting to the end of it? No, 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 not at <laughs> I'm all. I'm a lot older than you are, and I've been around for a long time. But when I was your age, my father said there was this stereotype about artists, and that was that artists starved. So right away, even though I was very passionate about art, uh, I was discouraged. But I was discouraged for good reason because they, they, at that time, it could have been true, okay? So I went into corporate America. I, I, I worked for corporate 500 companies for about 30 years, but I never gave up doing my passion for my art. But what, what God has a, has a way of showing you things. Okay, there's one thing that I know. If you got a gift to do anything, God meant for you to use that gift to service your fellow man, and, at the, and in turn, you get paid. But the one thing that I learned about artists is that they didn't have a sense of business, okay? And that's why a lot of them didn't fare too well in their numerous talent. So it's not enough to have talent, but you have to understand what this, this country has to offer. This is the greatest country on the earth. And that word capitalism is the secret to it, okay? You have to be able to look at your talent and have it create a product and understand that, that product is a product to be exchanged for funds on an open market. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. With a month game? Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't paint for the, somebody to pay your rent. That ain't gonna work. You don't paint for somebody to... Uh, We're not bartering. No, not no bartering. <laughs> you want a payday and you want your talent to take care of you. You want your talent to buy a home for you. Not rent, buy a home for you. You want your talent to buy cars. You want your talent to send your kids to college. Okay? If it can't do that, why even bother? Find a day job and be done with it. But, but you're not truly happy if you ignore a God's gift. Because that when you when you're doing something that God meant for you to do, that's your key to happiness. Yeah, that purpose. But I didn't happen. I didn't learn that till late, but it wasn't too late. Because what we did, we spurred a whole industry of affordable art. Because our what we wanted to do is service our people. So there was a long time, even back in my days, black people went to museums and they just looked at this art, knowing good and well they couldn't take it home. So what we did we says we got to make this affordable. We got to start grooming the next generation of art buyers and, and collectors. So we started doing this. We started doing inexpensive duplications of our originals. Okay? 
and we spurred a five billion dollar industry in the 90s. From 1985 to 2005, we were we were generating five billion dollars a year in trades in the African American art. It was un, it was not uncommon to have artists like myself make over a million dollars a year. Okay. Planes hitting the buildings in New York. The economic downfall in 2008 when President Obama took office devastated that, that uh, whole industry. One thing you have to understand is that art plays a particular part in society. Okay? It's something that you really don't need. Okay? You can eat it, it doesn't put shelf over you. It's a one item. It's, it's like buying a Mercedes when you don't when you only need a Volkswagen. Right. What does a Mer Mercedes do for you? Or a Lexus do for you? What does it do for you? It's, it's status. So when you have disposable income, that's when you can buy something that you, you don't need that you want. Right. Right. This suffers. www.designbycab.com Then you go www.bibsart.com That's amazing. You guys heard it. He dropped total knowledge. So I hope that you guys are really focusing. To all my artists, I hope that you feel inspired. I'll be right here in live in color. You have a legend right now <laughs> giving you game. So please, please absorb it and check out his art. And if you're in the market for art, it's definitely Definitely something that I can tell you I have an appreciation for. That I would love for you to take appreciation for. So you are with Che on 